Hey everyone, this is Charles Mitri from loungeboudoir.com and today I'm going to talk to you about the best camera value you can get for boudoir in 2020. So if you're looking to get into boudoir photography or you're looking to upgrade from maybe a crop sensor camera, you don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on the latest and greatest camera. You can get a great camera if you buy it used for well under a thousand dollars. So you can get a camera that will do a great job. It'll be full frame, dual card slots. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars or get the latest greatest camera to get great images. Okay, so without further ado, the camera that I have chosen as the best valued camera for 2020 is the Nikon D800. It's this camera right here. Now, I happen to shoot with the Nikon D800, but that did not, it was not a factor in me picking this camera because when I bought this camera, maybe three, three or four years ago, it was not the best valued camera at that time. So why did I pick this camera? Um, I picked this camera for a number of reasons. First of all, it is a full frame camera. It has a full frame sensor. It has 36 megapixels. It has dual card slots, which is really, really nice. So right here, it's got dual card slots. It has an SD card slot and then a compact flash card slot. And you can have this second card slot as a backup. And that has saved me twice when one of my cards went out and my compact, <clears throat> excuse me, my compact flash backup saved all the images. Another reason why I picked this camera is it's fully supported by a wide range of lenses from Nikon and from other third party, uh, other third party manufacturers. And it's a great price. You can get a used Nikon D800 in excellent condition for around 800 bucks. 850, 900, 800, depending on you know where you get it, for under a thousand dollars. And that is just a great deal. I mean, this camera came out in 2012, um, about eight years ago. And at that time it was, you know, it was king of the hill. Um, other than medium format camera cameras, this was quite an evolutionary uh, step in in camera manufacturing. So this was this was the uh, the camera not so long ago. Now they don't make it new anymore, so you have to buy it used. Now what I want to do is compare this camera to its rival, the, the Canon 5D Mark III, which they're very comparable models. And why did I pick the Nikon over the Canon? I don't have any bias. Well, I might have a little bias because I use Nikon, but I started on Canon. They're both great camera manufacturers, but in this particular instance, the camera that came closest to uh, possibly being the best camera value would have been the Canon 5D Mark III, but for reasons I'm going to go into now, I, I did pick that. So some of the differences are the D800 has 36 megapixels, the Canon 5D Mark III has 22. Now, the number of megapixels isn't the end-all be-all. It also d depends on the size of the pixels, but I'm not gonna get into a discussion of that here. The Nikon has 36, the 5D Mark III has 22. That's one difference. Another difference is shutter durability. The Nikon D800 is rated at 200,000 actuations. The Canon 5D Mark III is, is rated at 150,000 actuations. So technically you can get 50,000 more clicks uh, before your shutter mechanism needs to be replaced. Another difference is that the autofocus detection on the Nikon is effective up to f8. On the Canon 5D Mark III, it's effective up to 5.6. If you're someone like me who likes to shoot 
around 7.1 on wider shots, sort of environmental portrait type boudoir shots, that's, that's a factor that comes into play there. And with the D800, I can get away with that, with the autofocus. Another difference is the Nikon D800 has a USB 3 plug-in and the Canon has a USB 2. So you're gonna have faster data transfer with the Nikon than with the Canon. I will say this about the Canon, that if you shoot in very, very low light, um, you're gonna have better performance with less noise at higher ISOs from the Canon. But unless you're shooting boudoir by candlelight, uh, you're probably not going to exceed the native ISO of the D800, which is 6400. If getting, if shooting in low, low light is something that you do on a regular basis, you might want to go with the Canon 5D Mark III as opposed to the Nikon. But I don't think that's the case in most, uh, with most boudoir photographers. Now, the Sony a7 III was another camera I considered. I know there's a those cameras are uh, all of the Sony mirrorless cameras, the A9, the A7, they're very, very popular. However, a used Sony A7 III is gonna run you about $1,800 to $1,900. That's $1,000 more than getting a Nikon D800. And with that $1,000, you can easily get probably, probably three or four lenses. But going back to the best value, the best bang for your buck, for a full frame camera, the Nikon D800, you can get for let's say, let's say $800, $850. And you pick up a used 50 millimeter lens for 80 bucks. If you get the, what is it? The Nikkor uh, 50 millimeter 1.8D, you can pick one up for I think around 80 bucks. For less or right around $1,000, you're good to go you can start your business. If you get a brand new camera, like, like one of the Sony's or even, even a used Nikon D850, you're still gonna be paying at least 2,500 bucks for the D850. And for one of the new Sony's, you're talking upwards of sometimes $4,000. When you're starting out, you don't need that. You really don't because you're gonna improve upon your photography knowing more about lighting, uh, controlling your noise with high ISOs, framing your shot. You wanna be able to get the full potential out of this camera before you make a jump to a bunch more expensive camera. Now, that's my opinion. If you wanna buy a more expensive camera, you can go ahead and do so. But what I'm saying is that if you're just starting out, um, the better camera is not necessarily going to give you better images. You're going to get better images by improving on the things I just talked about. Knowing your lighting, knowing how to compose shots, knowing how to saturate your sensor, something called ETTR, exposing to the right. Things like that are going to give you better images than just buying a more expensive camera. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you like these videos. I'll be making more of them. And check out my full article on loungeboudoir.com, best camera value for boudoir in 2020 and where to buy it. Thank you so much, I appreciate your time and I will see you at some point in the future in the YouTube universe.